Hey, wrestling pals. So get your coffee ready. It is episode two of Shit the IWC Says. <laughs> So as we are aware by now, Asuka was presented her new Undisputed Raw Championship on SmackDown on Friday. And who crashed that party? It was Charlotte Flair. Woo! So Charlotte Flair wants to take a crack at that belt. Asuka did accept and they will be having that match June 30th, the day before Money in the Bank on SmackDown. But I was over on Twitter and I saw some things. And I've been seeing some things about my queen charlotte it's your queen now a lot of people want to say that she is handed opportunity after opportunity strictly because she is rick flair's daughter so first of all i think going into anybody else's place of work and telling them they're not good at something because maybe one of their family members did something like i'm not going to go to my doctor's office and tell her she's not qualified to give me a diagnosis because her grandfather was a doctor like, think about that. If you go watch some of Charlotte Flair's matches, especially in NXT and against Sasha Banks. Certified banger. Io Sky, uh, Becky Lynch. That woman puts in some work. And how much she has progressed as a wrestler from NXT to WWE, the main roster, it's like night and day. She is phenomenal. And she didn't just pull that out of her buttocks. She put in some work. So go watch some of those matches if you have not before you talk out of your bum bum. Thank you. Stop it. Charlotte Flair's been gone for a while. We haven't seen her since WrestleMania 39 when she lost on the grandest stage of all to Rhea Ripley. So she lost her SmackDown belt on the biggest pay-per-view in pro wrestling. I remember watching that match and afterwards, Charlotte Flair looking super happy for Rhea Ripley. They probably should have left that part out of the pay-per-view. But you know, you could tell she was just happy for her sister. So it doesn't seem like to me, she is really trying to bury anybody. That also being said, Charlotte Flair is the one back at WrestleMania 34 to end Asuka's 914 day streak at WrestleMania 34. So, you know, Asuka and Charlotte Flair do indeed have some history. So today I kind of want to talk about some male generational wrestlers that I don't really hear get the same slack online that Charlotte gets for being a flair. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into that. So I'm gonna use this next performer as an example. First of all, I wanna say that I'm speaking on my own behalf. This is not the thoughts and opinions on the channel. I am not a fan of Cody Rhodes in the main event picture. I'm sorry, y'all. There's something about the loafers and the long-winded speeches that is just not connecting with me. I've gotten that out of the way. I am a Dusty Rhodes fan. I do understand Cody trying to finish the story for his father. Dusty Rhodes wasn't exactly treated so well in WWF, WWE. He was kind of treated like a caricature. Like, they were kind of, you know, making fun of him um, for a various number of reasons, including his weight, stuff like that. So I do understand this is a beautiful story for Cody Rhodes, trying to finish that story, and his father has passed away. So I do see some differences here. That being said, Cody is using the Rhodes name and kind of using his dad's past for his own story. So what exactly is the difference between these two performers, Cody Rhodes and Charlotte Flair, kind of leaning into their legacy to kind of amplify themselves, let's be honest. Now, one more male wrestler that I kind of want to touch on is Randall Orton. Uh, so his father was Cowboy Bob Orton, and his father before that was Bob Orton. Imagine that. Oh, wow, this is confusing. No so Randall Orton's grandfather, Bob Orton Sr., he was wrestling back in the 60s and he would team up with people like Buddy Rogers, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, that would later influence Ric Flair. So Bob Sr. had his son, Cowboy Bob Orton. He was a fantastic heel back in the day. Cowboy Bob Orton started wrestling back in the early 70s in championship wrestling in Florida. He went from there to the AWA, to the NWA, and then to the WWF. From there, he went to the NWA, back to the WWF, to WC back to the WWE. He was kind of all over the place. He had bitter feuds with people like Jimmy Snuka and was a bodyguard for Roddy Piper. And then in 2005, Cowboy Bob was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Probably go out and hustle every day. We don't want to see this egotistical person wooing all over the place like Charlotte Flair kind of does in her big flashy robes 
living off of her father's legacy. But the thing is, we're not handed all of the information on a silver platter. So when you look at somebody, let's use Randall Orton as the example, that has a grandfather and a father that have done really well in their own careers, we don't see what happens backstage. We don't know what they're handed because of their legacy. We don't know all of the information. Now, while it may be a little off-putting that Charlotte Flair does go out there and does all of her wooing and all that stuff, I think we need to give this woman her fucking flowers. She has been putting on banger after banger. She did go out there and put over Rhea Ripley on the grandest stage of them all. I think the woman puts in a lot of hard work and unfortunately as a society and unfortunately as a community, I think we have to just realize nepotism, whether it's in our face or not, does exist. And some of these people may be handed things because of who their family lineage is. Get over it. Bye.